Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Tuesday, April the 23rd. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Connect Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Right off the bat, I want to thank all of you who reached out to me, especially those of you on Twitter who saw this, uh, reached out with, uh, to me with condolences, well wishes, prayers. Our friend Martin passed away on Sunday night after a lengthy battle with leukemia. Many of you had seen him in the news recently as looking for treatment as, as he was running out of options here. And yes, it was a six, uh, actually it was almost a year battle, year long battle with leukemia. And actually my, my two sons were closer to Martin than I was as they were his, he was one of their bowling coaches. So uh, made for uh, a bit of a tough time around the emo household yesterday, but good teaching moments as well. I spent some good quality time with, with my family on Easter Monday, it wasn't working. Uh, so thanks again for reaching out. I really appreciate that. Also had a chance to watch some playoff hockey. Pretty crazy how three of the four division winners are out. And that's Tampa Bay, that's Calgary now, that's Nashville. Washington is the only division winner still in the running. And they are facing a game seven against Carolina. So a lot of fun, these playoffs first round. Not, not going to make any broad sweeping statements of this is what the Canucks need to do to become a playoff team because of this model or this style or this technique. We have a lot of time to talk about that, but let's just enjoy what's going on. And we have three game sevens coming up. We've got Boston, Toronto today. We've got San Jose, Vegas today. And then we have Washington and Carolina tomorrow. So lots of good hockey to come. I might stay away from making predictions because of those of you on Twitter know I'm, I'm not doing so hot with those things, but we'll see. But let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks. Let's talk about the fact that they have an opportunity to really improve their team over the next two or three months. It's the draft, it's free agency, it's their own contracts. And you know, you're hearing a lot as the teams like Winnipeg and Nashville and Calgary and Tampa, as they all get eliminated, although they are very good teams, they're all teams, they, and even Toronto, if they lose, they're, they're all teams that are going to be facing some very, uh, you know, some, some cap crunches pretty soon. Whether it's UFAs, RFAs, a bunch of good players coming, uh, you know, coming to term or coming up for renegotiation at the same time. There are going to be a lot of opportunities for the Vancouver Canucks to get creative if they have the wherewithal to do so. And that's what I've been hearing a lot in, uh, you know, on the radio and stuff like that right now is will the Canucks have the, the creativity to do uh, things like that, weaponize their cap space. So one thing I put on Twitter yesterday, I simply said, where it, I, obviously the Canucks, they have to improve in a lot of places, but out of everywhere, what would be the number one priority for improving? And I basically only gave two choices. I said, is it improving their, getting a top six winger or two, or is it improving their de their blue line, their defense core? And I got almost 500 votes on Twitter, very good, uh, you know, uh, popular poll. And 60% said improve the blue line and 40% said get a top six winger. So 60 to 40, you know, uh, a considerable, uh, you know, difference, but it's not massive. It wasn't a landslide. So obviously that means both things are on Canucks fans' minds. Let's talk about um, both of them really quickly. Then I'll, then I'll end off by saying a quick word about the draft as well. So with the blue line, when you look at next year, it projects to look like this. Presuming they uh, re-sign Alex Edler, which it sounds like they're going to do. On your left side, you have Edler... You have Quinn Hughes, you have Ben Hutton, and you have Ole Ulevi probably fighting for a spot too. So there's four, you know, three solid blue liners already in Edler, Hughes, and and Hutton. And then you have uh, Ulevi uh, looking to make the team. On the right side, it's a little weaker. You have Chris Tanev, who's often injured, and you have Troy Stetcher. And that's it. That's it. You've traded Eric Branson. He's gone. Luke Shen, I like him a lot, but I would argue he's a seventh or eighth defenseman, maybe not your top six. So you see a glaring hole already on the right side is after uh, Chris Tanev and after Troy Stetcher, there's not a lot there. And you, with the, you can't just simply move a guy from the left to the right, at least unless they're very talented. Um, so really, that's what the Canucks are looking for is a right shot D. And you've heard names like Tyler Myers and Anton Stroman. And, you know, so there's a, there's going to be, especially as, as players get eliminated for the playoffs, whether they're in a contract year or not, or those guys that are UFAs or RFAs, are obviously tougher to pry from a team, but you, you're going to, we're going to be looking at the UFA market. And unfortunately, I, I upon a quick glance, looking at the UFA, you know, there's Eric Carlson too. But even uh, he's not having the best playoff. But who knows? San Jose could move on. Who knows what Eric Carlson wants to do? So there are certainly some big names uh, out there. But are they worth the money? And the ones that I see a lot are Carlson, Strollman, and Myers, to name a few. So that's on the D. But you can tell that the Canucks are looking for a right shot D man. I'm sure I'm missing a lot. I actually didn't look it up and look up the list before I made this video. But it's something I'll be looking, you know, looking at a lot more closely as we get closer to July, July one. Then up front. 
you could argue that after Horvat, Pedersen, Besser, and you know those are your your bona fide elite. Oh, elite's a strong word for, for Pedersen, maybe, but those are your very good, solid forwards. And then you have this next tier of guys that you can build around, or at least that are middle six guys. Mike could play up to the top six, but really you got you're looking at guys like Pearson, and Levo, and Vertanen, and maybe Berchi. And then you have your bottom six guys that aren't going anywhere. Guys like Roussel, and then Tim Schaller still got a year. Tyler Mott's a RFA. So then we know we have a bunch of those guys, even Louis Erickson. So the forty percent of you that said we need to find a winger, um, I agree with you. I agree with you. And there's going to be a lot of free agent wingers out there. There always are. Um, a lot of them will be overpaid uh, for sure. But you got to look at what do the Canucks need. A couple of you said specifically left wing versus right wing. And it's interesting, you know, uh, unlike D, with wingers, you can kind of flop to both sides depending on, on where you need to fill in holes. And for instance, on the Canucks roster, they only have three right wingers listed. They have Brock Besser, Nikolai Godobin, and Jake Vertanen listed as right wingers. That means every other winger is a left winger. That is Pearson, that's Levo, that's Berchi, that's, uh, who else, there's a lot, that's Anton Roussel. You know, there's there's, uh, there's at least four there. Louis Erickson's uh, listed as a left winger as well, so that's five. So I, I think there's, it's like seven to three is the way the Canucks, uh, and then a bunch of them are listed as centers too, like Tyler Mott, for instance, which obviously he didn't play center for us. So all to say, you know, when you look at the, Tanner Pearson, I think he played very well. You know, as you know, a big fan of his, very surprised by him. But let's say he's not your top line. You want him on your second or your third line. Then really, like I said, after, after and Horvat and Pedersen are centers, so they're fine down the middle, which I'll get to in a second. Really, you're only like looking at Brock Besser as a true bona fide top line winger. So there's a need for wingers as well. There's a, certainly a need uh, both on the left or right wing. And I think with when it comes to winger, you get who you can get. And then you kind of slot guys in after that, especially when we have such a you know lack of to high end talent on the on the wings. Um, don't worry so much if it's a left winger or right winger. Just get a, someone who's really good. And guys like Levo, guys like Pearson, guys like even Godolbin, Erickson, Vertanen, you they can play on either side um, once you fill in you know some some other spots. So both I'm interested in both both getting a a top D man or a good D man on the right side. For sure, right side, and then for the wingers, I'm, I'm fine either way to get as long as we get a you know a one or two more good wingers. And then you look at the draft. Uh, let's wrap up by looking at the draft, and it's you know there's a lot of centers there, and I think with the draft, when you're picking where the Canucks are picking at ten, you're not going to get a player that's going to likely stick in you know step in the lineup next season. He may, but it's very rare. We're likely looking at at least one more season for a guy to make an impact. And the way I break down the draft. Um, you know, and learning more and more. I'm not the guru that other people are when it comes to prospects, but I am learning a bit more about the draft. And really, it breaks down like this to me. After the, you know, you could argue that the top three, or you know, or at least guys that won't be around when the Canucks pick, are of course Jack Hughes, uh, Capocacco, and Puck Colson, right? The three forwards. And let's throw uh, defenseman Bowen Byron into that mix too. So I kind of break it down uh, like those, there's those three and there's Byron, and then there's the four. U.S. Uh, national development team guys of Zegris, Turcotte, Boldy, and Caulfield. Now, um, Zegris and Turcotte are centers, right? And if you look at the Canucks, they're pretty stacked down the middle from a standpoint of Horvat, Pedersen, Gaudet, and then one of Center Beagle. So I think the, uh, when you look at the top three, Horvat, Pedersen, Gaudet, you're fine in the center position. You've got Tyler Madden coming up. You're fine in the center position for a while. So maybe it's, you know, you, if you're not looking so much as a center, during the draft, although you could argue best, you know, best player available. But if you, you're comfortable with the centers, then of those four U.S. national development team guys, Turgot and Zegras are the centers. But you have Boldy, who plays on the left wing, great fit for the Canucks. And also you have Cole Caulfield, who plays on the right wing, also could be a great fit for the Canucks, giving them some, some uh, much-needed um, skill um, scoring goals. So you got the four U.S. guys, and then you have the three, what I call the three WHL guys. You have Dylan Cousins, you have Kirby Dock, and you have Peyton Krebs, all centers technically. So that's the way I kind of remember all the guys that are el eligible. So I've just named 11. Obviously, at least at least two of them are going to be available at 10, if not more, if someone else you know jumps into the, the top 10. But it's the three at the top, or near the top. Let's say the four near the top, just because I, I like to categorize them that way, of Hughes, Kako, Puck, Colson, and and Byram. Then you have the four U.S. national development team guys, of uh, Turcotte, Zegras, Boldy and Caulfield, and you have the three WHL centers of Cousins, Doc, 
and Peyton Krebs. And then, you know, other guys could work their way in there. You know, I've heard um, people talk about the two Swedish defensemen, uh, Broberg and Soderstrom. Um, they could work their way in there. And then uh, there, I've heard of New Hook from the BCJHL also in there. So now I've just named 14 guys. So the Canucks will have definitely um, a shot at getting a really good player. But my point is I'm not sure if any of those guys, aside from the, the top four, which who I don't think the Canucks will have a chance of, obviously. I don't think any of those guys will step in, uh, step in the lineup next season already. So all to say, I love your feedback. Yes, um, what would you consider the priority? If you could only, not, thankfully, we don't live in a world like this, but if you could only pick one free agent or one signing, would you rather have a D-man or a top six winger? And then let's open it up past that. What type of demon, educate me, what type of right shot demon could we go after? I only named a few because I can only remember a few, Carlson, Meyer, Strawman. But put a list down for me below so I can start looking at these guys. And also, what type of wingers are coming up uh, in free agency, UFAs, that you think the Canucks would should pursue? Is it a guy like Michael Furlan? Is it a guy like Wayne Simmons? Is it a guy, you know, of that ilk? And obviously, because they're coming UFAs, these are the 25, 26-year-olds as opposed to the 21 or 22-year-olds who have to sign RFA contracts. Again, much harder to pry from teams. All right, Canucks fans, leave a comment below. I left a lot for you. You can talk about the first round of the playoffs. You can talk about anything you want, but uh, let's get some conversation going. We really want to do more of that on this channel as we, we try and pass the time. In this, in this off season, like I said, I have a lot on my Easter Monday video, a lot of hope for sure, Easter Sunday video, I should say, I have a lot of hope for this team with the draft, with free agency, with the 50th anniversary season, and the, the changes can start pretty soon, actually. So leave a comment below. Who do you want to see the Canucks go after? Enjoy the day. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy the two game sevens today. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks go.